So welcome everyone. This is the Wednesday, April 17th, 2019 meeting of the Amherst Planning Board. First item on our agenda is minutes, and we have two sets of minutes in our packets. So if members have had a chance to review these, I'd entertain a motion on either of the sets of minutes. These are from Wednesday, April 3rd, and Wednesday, March 20th. Um, well, I move we approve the minutes of, uh, of um, bu -bu -bu -bu. April 17th. I'm sorry, today's April 17th. Would that be April 3rd? <laughs> November 20th. March 20th. Yeah. March, March 20th. 20th. Okay. Sorry. Motion has been made. I'll second. And seconded. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, raise your hand. I should have stayed. This is March 20th. Oh, March 20th. Okay. Yeah. okay. So we have four in favor, all opposed, all abstaining. So that passes four to zero with two abstentions. Can I move we approve the minutes of uh, April 3rd? I'll second. I'll second. Uh, Christine, I think you were absent for that one. Oh, I can't second. Mm -hmm. second. I just can't vote. Yeah. That's yeah. true. All right, so that's moved and party seconded, just out of an okay. abundance of caution there. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? All opposed? And all abstaining? Zero opposed and three abstaining. 303. All right, thank you very much. Next item on our agenda is public comment. This is a time for public comment on items that will not be heard later on the agenda. Yes, Chris. I'm sorry, I'm a little slow tonight. May I see the hands of the people who abstain again? That's on which one? April 3rd. Second one? April 3rd? I should know. Thank you. Is there any public comment? Again, this is for items not related to uh, any material on our agenda. Yes, please come forward to the microphone, introduce yourself. Is it related to the tree hearing? Yes. Yes, that will be heard later on the agenda. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes, please, if your comment is related to the tree hearing, that will be coming up shortly. This time is for public comment that is not related to any items on our agenda. Is there any such public comment? All right, seeing none, we're now going to move on to the next item on our agenda. This is item three, Scenic Roads, joint public hearing with Tree Warden. And in accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 40, Section 5C, Scenic Roads, and Chapter 87, Section 3, Shade Trees, this joint public hearing between the Planning Board and Tree Warden has been duly advertised in the Daily Hampshire Gazette and posted in Town Hall. And this is a scenic road tree removal for construction of a mixed-use building and site improvements in the town right-of-way at 133 to 143 Southeast Street, Map 15C, Parcels 3 and 4. The public shade trees impacted by this project include the following trees. Sizes indicate diameter at breast height, a 6 to 18 uh, inch arborvitae, sorry, this is a 6 to 18 foot arborvitae on northern property line, a 142 uh, inch catalpa tree, 124 inch spruce tree, 122 inch spruce tree, which is currently dead, 114 inch crab apple, 16 inch hickory or elm, <coughs> and one swamp white oak to be transplanted by the town, as well as several large oaks and a red maple on southern edge that might have impact to roots as a result of grading. And so we're now going to move on to hear a little bit more about this. And it's my understanding that we have received a letter of opposition to the removal of the Catalpa tree. And what that means is that that tree will require action by the town council. Um, I would just ask the author of the letter if they could come forward to clarify if, if that was the intent of their uh, submission today. Uh, as long as the green light is on, okay, yep, you're yeah. being amplified. Thank you. Uh, yes, was it my intention to have it go to the council? Oh, and I'm sorry, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, Molly Turner. 
Uh, yes, and again, if I understand correctly, you've submitted a letter in opposition to the yes, removal of the catalpa tree, and so under the relevant state law, that would mean that this matter will go to the town council rather than be determined by the tree warden and the planning board. And so your objection was specific to the catalpa tree, is that correct? It's actually um, to all the trees, but I, I focus on the catalpa tree. And I'm sorry, I don't have a copy of your written submission in front of me. Does that submission mention? Yes, thank you. I've been provided one. So if I understand correctly, you are uh, protesting the removal of all the trees that yes. were mentioned. All right. And if I could then ask either... Uh, Ms. Brestrup or Mr. Snow to confirm my understanding that this means that uh, there is not need for a public hearing at this time because this matter will go to the town council on all of the trees? Mr. Snow? That is correct. All right. Um, if there's no further comment or objection, then I would propose that we close this public hearing and the matter will go forth to the town council. Thank you. All right. Okay. The town council will review this accordingly. Yes. Can I make the statement? May I make the statement? The public hearing has actually been closed, so there's not an opportunity at this time for public comment, but there will be when the <coughs> town council takes up the matter. Thank you very much. Did you vote, move and vote to close it? We have not formally uh, moved to close the public hearing. Would someone make I such a motion? To okay. Close the public hearing. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you again. Uh, the next timed item on our agenda is a 715, so uh, before that comes up, We'll work our way through some other items on our agenda. So I'd like to turn to old business item 7B, and this is SPR 2018-11, off University Drive, U Drive LLC. I believe uh, the applicant is here and has some updates for us. point out that you do have a, an email from um, attorney Tom Reedy on your desk that outlines all of the things that are being asked for and I'm sure Mr. Burson will um, reiterate those things but this might help you when you're making your motion to Thank know you. that that's all in the email. Uh, so yes please introduce yourself and tell us about the latest on this project. Thank you. Um, just briefly is there anywhere I can put this in? Uh, I was hoping to just show the old plan so you can see the difference. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the Planning Board, thank you for having me here. My name is Dave Burson, I'm an attorney from David Wilson. I'm here tonight on behalf of U Drive LLC. Uh, with me tonight is Barry Roberts, who's uh, one of the managers of U Drive LLC. Um, so, uh, back in May of 2018, uh, we received through a joint Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals process, a, a special permit with site plan review approval relative to a mixed use building uh, in accordance with Section 3.325 of the Zoning Bylaw. Um, one of the conditions, specifically condition number seven, um, effectively stated that any proposed changes to the submitted materials um, require planning board approval uh, and review. Uh, 
Um, so to that end, we are here tonight because we have uh, submitted some what we believe to be uh, relatively de minimis changes to what was originally proposed. Um, and specifically, what we are requesting uh, is first um, a change of the proposed color. Um, unfortunately, um, the colors that we had originally chosen uh, were unavailable in the amounts that we needed. Um, and just so you can see, the, the previous colors are shown here. Um, there was a, a yellow, brownish, red color as well as a slate gray. Um, and what we are proposing instead is um, this light gray on uh, the bunkhouse, a cranberry mauve red, um, as well as a, uh, a brown. And um, it's somewhat difficult sometimes to see or get a clear idea of what those colors actually look like. Um, so we have brought with us as well um, a sampling of the colors that are actually going to be marked here um, with the first box. Uh, if you'd like to see these, I'm happy to bring these up so you can inspect them yourselves a little bit later. But for now, I'm just going to leave them here. Um, so in addition to the uh, change in the uh, proposed color, uh, similar to the general color of the building originally, we have proposed uh, some black trim on the windows. Um, and same with the other exterior colors. Unfortunately, we only had white available, so we're proposing white trim on those windows. Um, additionally, on the uh, westerly portion uh, of the building, if you're looking at the building from the south, um, there was a bump out. And I don't know if you can see my mouse, but there was a bump out right here uh, mm -hmm. that was adjacent to a stairwell in the building um, and we are actually proposing to no longer have um, that bump out as you can see it's now flat that was adjacent to a stairwell so there's no change in any of the square footage to the proposed units uh, in the building itself um, and then finally um, there were originally proposed sliding doors um, on the second and third floor uh, with this wrought iron somewhat Juliet style uh, railing here. Um, and we are now proposing in the same exact shape as the sliding doors, now we're just proposing uh, standard windows in its place uh, without the wrought iron uh, railing adjacent to it. Um, so we're not proposing any uh, other changes. We're not proposing any changes which would uh, impact the previously approved site plan and layout of the proposed structure. Um, we believe that these changes are, are relatively de minimis, uh, and we're hoping that this board will agree with us and approve those changes. Thank you very much. Questions or discussion? Jack. I was just curious about the bump out. Uh, there's a stairwell above within that bump out? Correct. And then it moves. So the stairwell is still there, so small. Exactly. OK. Yeah. Additional questions, comments? And again, we've been provided in writing a list of all the changes made to the plan, which Mr. Burson just described, and which the applicant is requesting the board accept. If there's no further discussion, I'd entertain a motion to approve the changes as presented. So move. All right, that's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Chris. Um, you might consider taking Mr. Wilson next for Apple Brook, even though he's also farther down the agenda, um, because I believe it's going to be a short item. And he presented last time to uh, four of the board members, so they have a pretty good understanding what it is he's going to be asking for. So Mr. Wilson is sitting in the audience with his hat on. Very good. Yes, that would be a 720 item. So. Um, We'll give that just a minute or two before we turn to that, but I agree we can take that uh, out of sequence. Yes. I think Mr. Wilson is an untimed item. Oh, you're referring to Under item business. number 5A, is that correct? 5A? Uh, so that's 7A? 7A, yes, very good. Yes, that's fine. So we'll now turn to item 7A under old business, SPR. C 2018-10, Paul Cole, Applebrook Cluster Subdivision, 1194 West Street, now Vista Terrace, to review change to footprint of house on lot five in accordance with condition number two of the decision. And this is con uh, continues a discussion from April 3rd of this year. I just 
wanted to pull up um, an image of the plan as a whole. Great, thank you. My name is Russ Wilson. Um, I'm the contractor on this project. Um, we're, I'm here to ask um, <clears throat> that you folks approve the flipping of a house <coughs> in the, on lot five. Uh, originally, uh, and in, in, well, this plan has changed. Originally, we had the garage at the eastern end of the property and we've got some folks that are interested in purchasing this house but they want to flip the house so that the master bedroom would be toward the woods not toward the neighborhood and this plan depicts the change and then i brought some pictures that would show what the house would look like if, uh, if i may approach you guys and show you my pictures Yes, please. So this is, we're essentially building the same house that we've already built. Um, and that's what it would look like when you're approaching it. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for that information. And as was mentioned, this was discussed previously at the board's meeting on April 3rd. Are there any further comments or discussion on this item? Christine. I just remember from way back when that um, it was the long driveway because it was for the fire trucks to turn around or something. Or are they okay with this? This doesn't affect the hammer that's turned around. The, the hammerhead turnaround is on block three. Uh, okay. So block three is right this there. one. This yeah. is the hammerhead turnaround right there. Yeah. Yeah. So that is not affected. So a truck can pull in here and then back up. Exactly. And this driveway here doesn't affect it. Right. Thank you for that. Further comments? Yes, Michael. Uh, is there any likelihood that you, want, you will ultimately make the same request on lot four? Because it seems to me that if you did, then that would put all the driveways in the same cluster, all the garages facing each other and all the bedrooms facing away from the garages. Well, not necessarily. It might be your decision to reverse them. At this point, no. Okay. Further comments, questions? If not, entertain a motion to accept the changes as proposed. I so move. That's moved and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so we're now going to move on to item four. This is a public hearing on planning board rules and regulations, and in accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 40A and Chapter 41, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted. This hearing is being held for the purposes, purpose of providing an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding proposed amendments to the Amherst Planning Board's rules and regulations. This is a 7.15 p.m. public hearing, p.m. PBR 119, Planning Board Rules and Regulations, to review, update, and amend the Planning Board Rules and Regulations to bring them into conformance with the Amherst Home Rule Charter as adopted March 27, 2018. 
This was an amendment previously discussed uh, by this board. Uh, a draft was prepared by staff and reviewed at a previous meeting. Recommendations were made and uh, we're now here to vote on that draft. Chris, do you have anything to share? I do not, except that um, eventually the um, planning board may wish to make a proposal to change the zoning bylaw with regard to the voting requirement. But that's not what you're doing at this time. And to add on to that, uh, part of what these changes would do is remove the reference to voting requirements in the planning board rules and regulations and simply point out that the regulations, those voting requirements are in keeping with the uh, zoning bylaw. In the current situation, we have voting requirements in both documents um, when the zoning bylaw would take precedence. And so the planning board determined it was not necessary to have the voting requirements stated uh, duplicatively in the rules and regulations. Are there any comments, questions on this change? Are we talking, are we talking about public comment at this point? Uh, at this point, I'm looking for a testimony from the board. And I'll turn to public comment after. Yes, Michael. Um, I, I'm still concerned uh, about the um, uh, the differences in which uh, the differences in the way in which the voting requirements are stated for the special permit and site plan review. Only one of them refers to uh, the zoning board, the zoning bylaw, um, and um, it seems to me that I, I still maintain that the. Uh, voting ought to be the same uh, for both. On the other hand, uh, I also wonder why we're referring to the um, uh, zoning bylaw in the site plan review section, but not referring that way in the special permit uh, voting requirements section. Uh, it seems to me they ought, those two ought to be in parallel. Uh, Chris. So you could actually probably drop the reference to the special permit voting requirements because those are dictated by the state. The state requires a two-thirds vote for um, special permits. And um, so you could probably do without that unless you want it to be explicit and say explicitly that it had to be at least five. Michael. Uh, I would think being explicit would be useful. Uh, whoever reads this document is not necessarily going to refer to the state law, but they're going to take it off what, what is written here if they're concerned with the issue at all. Um, and it seems to me that however we come down on this, uh, the clearer we are in this document, the better things will be for us in the long run. Chris? I think the zoning bylaw doesn't even refer to special permit voting requirements for the planning board because um, the assumption is that you're going to refer to state law. So that's just the way, that's the way it is, that you refer to state law for special permit. So I believe Chris had suggested that we could omit section one under voting requirements, which refers to special permit, simply for the reason that we would need to be in keeping with state law. And I'm fine with that omission. Yeah. Um, except that, I mean, the point about two-thirds of seven is not a whole number, and that as drafted here, it clarifies that two-thirds equals five for a seven-person board, seven person memo, uh, board. And that clarification, I think, is helpful as opposed to leaving it ambiguous. Jack? Um, with regard to the state law, is that something that we can go higher than two-thirds, or how does that bind us? I mean, sometimes the towns can be more conservative, but I don't know, I'm not sure what that means in, the, in this context. Unfortunately, I don't have the state law in front of me, but I could research that if you wanted to continue this public hearing. We have uh, someone in the audience that could comment on this. Yes, please. Would you mind um, using the microphone? Thank you. Uh, David Burson from Bacon Wilson. Uh, thank you for letting me speak. Um, this is actually my first time actually giving public comment as opposed to <laughs> presenting something. But um, 
Uh, with respect to uh, state law, uh, the requirements are based on the size of the board itself. So if it's a uh, board that has six or more members, uh, in that case, it's two thirds. Um, if it's a five member board, you need at least four votes. And if it's uh, less than a five member board, you need unanimity with respect to special permits. Um, and just as, a, as an aside, I, I think, you know, making a reference to the relevant section of 40A, which I believe is 40A section nine, um, can only be helpful uh, for clarification purposes when it comes to special permits. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion on this item? Chris? Would you like to have town council review this draft before you vote on it? Has town council reviewed this draft at any point up the to town now? Town council has not reviewed this draft. Town attorney. I would be in favor of that. And would you like to have them give an opinion or suggestions about um, what to include in the voting requirements? Yes. Would, yes. That being the case, entertain a motion to continue this public hearing, unless there's further discussion at this time. Do we need to continue the public hearing or do we need to simply table the issue? I believe that continuing the public hearing would be a prudent approach to this, given that the discussion is ongoing. We're seeking additional input in the form of advice from town council. Chris? Advice from town council is usually considered testimony or additional information, so that would come during public hearing, so I think it would be wise to continue the public hearing. I'll move to continue the public hearing until such time as the town council has had a chance to review the issue and given us uh, their advice. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Chris? I think you need to move to a date certain, but then you can always choose at that time to move to another date certain, so you might want to move to May 15th or May 29th which do you think would be more appropriate? Probably the 29th would make sense. Okay. Amend the motion to uh, I move to uh, continue the hearing until May 29th. I second that. Motion amended and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Next item on our agenda. 720, number five, ZBA application, review and recommendations on ZBA FY 2019-17, Breck Group, Amherst, Massachusetts, LP, Aspen Heights Residential Community, requesting a special permit to modify the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2017-00024 for the reduction in height and density of the project, along with the amendments of other applicable conditions of approval, and for the modification of fencing to exceed six feet in height under section 10.33, 10.38, and 6.24 and 6.29 of the zoning bylaw at 408 Northampton Road, map parcel 13D51, professional and research park zone. Applicant could please uh, introduce yourself, of course. tell us about the project. Uh, good evening, my name is David Burson. I'm an attorney from uh, Bacon Wilson. Uh, Mr. Chair and members of the planning board, thank you for having me tonight. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Breck Group Amherst, Massachusetts uh, LP, Limited Partnership. Um, so uh, in t November of 2017, uh, we received an approval relative to a three-story, 115-unit, multifamily structure located at 408 Northampton Road which is the location of the uh, Amherst Motel. Um, it's a 4.1 acre parcel split between Amherst and Hadley, and it's located within the PRP zone. Um, following receipt of that approval, uh, there was an appeal filed um, by uh, the abutters located at, at Greenleaves. Um, and uh, subsequent to that appeal, there was a court decision in order that the um, matter be remanded back to the Zoning Board of Appeals consistent with some uh, changes um, that have been um, discussed between um, our applicant or, or us and uh, Greenleaves. Um, so to that end, we are actually on tomorrow night's agenda, agenda with the Zoning Board of Appeals relative to some proposed changes to the plan that was originally approved for the uh, residential multifamily structure there. Um, so we're here tonight seeking a recommendation from the Planning Board 
uh, relative to our proposed changes uh, so that we can have uh, hopefully a positive recommendation from this board uh, when we present tomorrow night for our modification of, of, of our previously approved special permit. Um, so uh, that being said, um, specifically, um, the primary change, the most substantial change that was made here uh, was with respect to the density of the project. Um, originally, uh, it was a three-story, 115-unit uh, dwelling unit uh, structure. That was what had been proposed. Uh, we're now proposing a, a two-story two structure um, with 88 units. Um, the primary, the, the way that they uh, were able to do that is they effectively eliminated all of the four-bedroom units from the project. Um, there are no longer any four-bedroom units proposed. Um, so, um, let me show you elevations. Um, so this is the new proposed elevation uh, for the um, Aspen Heights residential community, um, as, it's, uh, as it's called. Um, there's no proposed change with respect to the building footprint or parking area. Um, it's all going to stay effectively the same. I think the, the thinking here is that um, it certainly can't hurt to have more parking space than um, was originally proposed for the number of units. Um, additionally, the, uh, as far as the changes to the site plan, uh, there's only one other change um, that does impact the site plan, which is relative to the fencing along um, the um, Green Leaves Drive uh, on the southerly portion of the property. I, ap I apologize, the easterly portion of the property, and I'm just trying to find the... Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, so the portion we're talking about all right, um, is right, around, right here. Originally, what had been proposed was a six-foot-tall um, solid wood fence um, that would run along Green Leaves Drive. Um, now it's being proposed, and starting right here at the uh, wetland buffer, we're not crossing or making any changes within the wetland buffer. We're now proposing an eight-foot-tall fence uh, along this drive, um, and the ground clearance um, is going to change. So the ground clearance within the wetland buffer is uh, approximately nine inches and the proposed cl ground clearance for this eight foot tall section of fence, which actually will end uh, right here, as soon as the drive curves, uh, will be four inches. Um, so that is the, the only change to the actual uh, proposed site plan that had been shown. Um, once again, the building footprint will not change. Um, it's merely a matter of density at this point. Um, so that is the primary change. If you have specific questions, um, I will do my best to answer them. Uh, but once again, we are seeking a recommendation from this board uh, relative to our special permit application tomorrow. Thank you. Chris. I wonder if Ms. Mr. Burson would comment on the number of affordable units now that the number of units has been reduced to 88? Uh, yes, yeah, so the number of affordable units um, is now 5%. Um, of the total units, uh, and that's going to be four units. Chris. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I apologize. That, <laughs> that's 5% of the units are fully accessible. Um, the number of affordable units uh, will be 11 units. So two one-bedroom units, seven two-bedroom units, and two three-bedroom units. Chris. Would Mr. Burson Repeat that, please. Could you please repeat that count of unit uh, configurations? Yes, and, and I will slow it down. So um, two one-bedroom units, seven two-bedroom units, and two three-bedroom units. Thank you. Do you have information available on the affordability level at which the units are proposed to be provided? Um, I, I do not at this point. Uh, my understanding is that there's still some discussions going on with the um, Amherst Housing Authority. And Thank you. That's where we are. My comment relative to that last question would be that to the extent possible, I would like if the project could provide some housing at below the 80% median income level that was stated in the previous special permit. Um, don't want to negate any recommendations you're receiving from the Amherst Housing Authority on what they think would be ideal uh, in terms of units, but something we've seen pretty commonly in new units and new developments that provide affordable housing, 
is units provided at below the standard 80 percent level. We see 50 percent, we see 30 percent, and I would like to recommend uh, the ZBA explore that possibility throughout this process. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to second that. I think it's very important that we not go backwards on this uh, point, uh, that we continue to re remain where we were in the original proposal or improve on that. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Again, now what we are doing is providing recommendations to the ZBA, which is the body that will be permitting this project. I've requested one recommendation be made. Any others before we move on? Chris? I just wanted to clarify what um, Mr. Stutzman's recommendation was. I believe that what you said is that you would like some units to be available at 80 percent or less, some units to be available at 50 percent or less, and some units to be available at 30 percent or less. Am I correct in my understanding? Yes. Thank you. Any further comments? Um, if I can just make one comment yes. uh, relative to that. Um, if the planning board or, or Ms. Brestrup wouldn't mind just sending that to us in an in email communication so that we could share that with our client. Just in, I want to make sure that I don't get it wrong uh, when translating that, that request. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right. If there's no further discussion, I'd entertain a motion to recommend well, again. Yes. Um, I just want to make sure I understand. So you're not... Although the number of units is declining by however many, 20 some, it seems there's still going to be 240 parking spaces? Correct. There's no proposed change to the number of parking spaces. And just um, for clarification, originally with the uh, three stories, there was a proposed bed count of 295 beds within the overall structure. Um, and the current count. Um, is 192 beds. Okay. Thank you. All right. If there's no further discussion, I'd entertain a motion that we recommend the ZBA approve the changes to this project, uh, incorporating the recommendation previously discussed relative to the affordable units. I will so move. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Thank you. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? And that's unanimous. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. All right. We'll now move down further on the agenda to item. Six, planning and zoning. Item 6A, the zoning subcommittee report. Uh, zoning subcommittee uh, met this evening and we heard from a citizen who's interested in taking a look at the regulations for marijuana uses, specifically cultivation, uh, and how we might revise those regulations to allow a project in North Amherst to go ahead. This is not the first time we've heard about this issue. Uh, we've heard from a number of people who are interested in cultivating marijuana in the town that the current interpretation of the buffer zones, which restrict marijuana uses um, by the building commissioner, which incorporates the driveway for such uses into uh, the use itself, has made it difficult to locate these uses. And so the zoning subcommittee agreed to take a closer look at revising regulations uh, to bring them in line with state regulations which have since adopted removed the buffer requirements with the exception of the buffers related to schools. So the zoning subcommittee and staff will be looking at how uh, this might take form and what effect it might have. And generally we're supportive of the notion that uh, marijuana cultivation uses should be able to locate in the town. Also. Uh, David is working on drafting a memo to town council. Town council is going to be hearing from uh, planning staff on May 1st about the master plan and on May 8th about zoning in general. And uh, at that time or shortly after, the zoning subcommittee will 
provide the town council, that is the community resources subcommittee of the town council, with a memo describing a few small zoning changes we think could be appropriate, as well as our much larger list of changes that have been discussed over the years. The zoning subcommittee will next meet on May 1st. Is there any public comments on the zoning subcommittee report? All right, seeing none. Is there any other? Yes. Jack. Um, so that's going straight from the zoning subcommittee to, uh, to who? Are we going to review yes. what's coming out? Okay, on May 1st probably? Or? The intent is that we'll have a document by May 1st and the planning board can review it at that time prior to submitting it to town council. That's the intent. And so if I deliver by May 1st, I'm really hoping and expecting you're all going to read it. <laughs> closely and carefully and say it's great. <laughs> and thanks for volunteering to write that to you. Yeah, thanks. All right. Any other comments on the zoning subcommittee report? Are there any planning and zoning other issues? No? All right. Moving on down the agenda, are there any old business topics not reasonably anticipated? No. New business topics not reasonably anticipated? Any Form A and r subdivision applications? We do have a Form A application. This one is from the Common School. Um, I'm going to pass around a locus map which shows you where this is located. It's down on South Pleasant Street um, on the west side of South Pleasant Street. The Common School owns, a, uh, owns their own property where the school is and then they also own a property with a house on it that they had intended to turn into an office building. Um, so this plan here shows that house lot and then I will come around and show you an image of what they're proposing to do with that lot. Mr. Stutzman to sign this, endorse this plan. All right. Very good. Thanks for that. Do we have any upcoming ZBA applications? I'm going to look to Ms. Um, Field Sadler to uh, tell us about ZBA applications if we have any new ones. Very good. Thank you. Any upcoming SPP, SPR, SUB applications? Chris? Um, we have several. We have one um, for Aya, which is the new noodle sushi restaurant in the One East Pleasant Street. Um, you're going to be hearing about that on May 1st, and that is a class one restaurant with seasonal outdoor dining and live and pre-recorded entertainment. That's what they're hoping to do there. Um, the second one is the dog park that's being proposed by the town of Amherst over at the uh, old landfill on the west side of, that is west, no, south side of Old Belcher Town Road. Um, and so that will be coming before you sometime in May, probably. And then the third one is um, Amir Bikchi, um, who is proposing his 62-unit uh, building on Southeast Street. He hasn't yet submitted his application, and I think that part of the hang-up is about what to do within the town right-of-way. As you heard tonight, um, there's been an objection to removing the trees there, so that would um, cause him to need to go to the town council. Um, and then, in, in addition to that, um, 
his, his consultant who was here tonight in the audience, Mike from Berkshire Design, um, is working out details of what's going to be going on in the street itself. In other words, exactly where the bus stop will be, exactly where the crosswalk will be, and then um, Mr. McChee will have to um, have a discussion with the town about exactly um, who's paying for which portions of this. So many things need to be kind of finalized. Um, so I'm not sure if he's going to be coming forward in May, but he will be coming forward soon. Thank you. Moving on to Planning Board Committee and Liaison Reports, PVPC. Uh, we had a meeting uh, in Hadley uh, last week, and the featured speaker was Joanne Morin. And she's with uh, Mass uh, Department of en Energy Resources. And the topic was on the Massachusetts Comprehensive Energy Plan. And this is focused more on uh, conservation measures. So there's targets just in terms of like where the energy comes from. And that this is complementary to, to that in terms of uh, uh, reducing, uh, it, basically, it's uh, conservation or making buildings more efficient. It's more on the HVAC component of things. Uh, it also addresses transportation and, and electricity, but HVAC is where it seems like the state wants to make more progress. Um, and, and then she just went in the background of, you know, about electricity in, in Massachusetts and where, the, where that's coming from. Uh, the director, there's a search for a re replacement for Tim Brennan, and that's um, should be happening, you know, within the next month. Uh, big shoes to fill there. Tim Brennan's been there 40 years. Uh, and then the annual meeting is June 13th. You know, we're all uh, welcome. And Ken Kimmel, who used to be the commissioner of the Mass DP, who is now with the Union of Concerned Scientists, is going to talk about it. Uh, have a climate change focus for that annual meeting. And it's going to be at Gateway, no, excuse me, uh, where is that going to be? Yeah, well, I, I, um, sorry, I don't know where that is, but I will <laughs> within you know, the next meeting or two. All right, thank you. Uh, CPA? Um, yeah, uh, Committee of Preservation Act Committee uh, has, has submitted, or has prepared, and I think submitted its uh, final recommendations to the uh, uh, to the town council, which will then be uh, automatically funneled to the uh, um, finance committee, uh, and then returned to the uh, uh, to the council. The uh, the primary. Uh, Issues which relate to this uh, body, I think, uh, relate are, are the uh, major uh, recommendation to fund the uh, uh, Valley CDC uh, uh, single room, enhanced single room occupancy project on Northampton Road uh, to uh, approve purchases of three tracts of land for conservation and recreation purposes. Um, those are the, those are the major um, items that uh, the, um, the CPAC is, is referring onward. All right. Excuse me. Yes, David. Michael, were any proposals rejected? Yes. How, do you have an like, estimate of how many? Uh, I should have brought the information. There were, I believe, five proposals that were not advanced. Um, and they were, ascent, they were minor proposals in terms of the dollar amounts. Uh, they were clearly major proposals in terms of the people who were proposing them. Uh, but uh, they were not a significant dollar amounts, with one exception, which was a, 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 a housing proposal which was semi-withdrawn by the proposer in favor of another proposal that the proposer had put forward, which was approved, or which, which was recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Ag Commission, um, yes, sorry. Yeah, there was supposed to be a meeting, which I believe did not happen last week, and there will be one upcoming in May, so hopefully I'll be able to attend that and report. Great, thank you. Design Review Board? Uh, there has not been a meeting since my last report. Okay. 
uh, Housing Trust has met and has been working on updating its uh, draft housing policy for the town, which it would like to pass on to this body and others uh, for adoption. It's also discussing a potential update to the housing production plan, which was drafted and approved in 2013. Uh, also working on the East Street School Project and the 40R consultant study, which is ongoing, uh, for which the forum was held last week. I think some members of the planning board and some members of the town council attended that forum, and we should be expecting a number of other forums to be held in the near future, which would be of interest to planning board members. Again, this is uh, a study that's being done with a grant that was awarded to the town, and it's looking at the possibility of creating language for a 40R smart growth district, which is a uh, type of district that allows the municipality to receive a zoning incentive payments for allowing greater density than currently is allowed with a minimum uh, affordability requirements in the district. And we've seen this used effectively uh, in Northampton, in Village Hill, and in other uh, areas around the state. So that's an exciting project that's ongoing. Um, Housing Trust will meet again next month. Zoning subcommittee, we've already heard from. UTAC um, has been winding up. I hasn't met in a while, but there was a meeting recently. Christine, did you attend? I did attend that meeting. It was um, only the town side of UTAC that was meeting. It was with the town manager, the assistant town manager, and the director of economics development. Um, and it was to solicit comments from members uh, of UTAC about how, if UTAC was to end, what should continue in its presence, what kind of relationship with the university or universities or colleges. Um, and they're also working on a strategic agreement that comes up, I think, every five years. So um, they took the comments, and they're going to have another meeting in the future. Was there any um, common themes or any sort of consensus about a recommendation on how the group might proceed or reform? Um, everyone seemed to feel that some kind of organization uh, or group should be, uh, there were various forms. Frustrations were similar that it was hard to get, like I said, this was only a town side of it, so there was, you know, frustration in, in trying to get the university to interact on a higher level with the town um, and be concerned about the same issues that town people are concerned about. So that was why the strategic agreement was coming up and, and I think the town manager, they were looking at this not just about UTAC but in a larger sense they're trying to figure out their tactic for strategy with you know having relations with the university or colleges. So no one from the university was present? No one, just town side. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for that. And the downtown parking working group? The Downtown Parking Working Group continues to meet and work with the consultant Nelson Nygaard. There was an important event last week. There was a public forum um, where the consultant continues to collect feedback from stakeholders and residents um, on issues of parking. And it was also a good public forum. They had quite a long 40-minute, 40 45-minute talk sort of bringing about the history because this is been going on for a long time, um, the history of what's been going on, and they sh showed that they're sort of up to speed on, on all the past, because there was a parking study in 2008 and 2016, so it was very educational. So they're taking all that information, and now they're starting to work to come up with a draft report, which we would expect uh, where are we in June? maybe in the next month or six weeks. Mm -hmm. So it seems relatively early in the process, and I had one observation. I wasn't able to attend the forum, but there was an article in one of the local newspapers about it, and I believe it said that the consultants, even at this early phase, uh, as my understanding, that the recommendations about the feasibility, location, scope of potential second parking structure were within their scope, and that this article was saying that the consultants recommended against um, such a parking structure because of cost. Is that an accurate reflection of what the consultants are saying at this time? They presented information and information, but there was no recommendations that will come with this draft report. I think it was more just they were addressing it. Part of their scope of work 
is at least a memo detailing you know the pros and cons of parking structure i think what he, they also brought up was it isn't just about one parking structure it's about we have development going on in different areas of downtown and um, so parking needs could be different and one place if you built a parking garage well, where do you build it and um, we only we have very limited choices for public space that could you know have a parking spot so then it gets pushed back onto private um, which they you know how do they pay for it or whatever um, so I think the point is all options are on the table they're just talking about it generally but it's in their thought process and of course there's a large price tag with the parking garage what we're hoping first off from the report is that they will address things we could do in the meantime because first you have to find the money and design it and it could take years and we want to improve parking now and make it better for everybody in the short term and the long term. Great. And is there a time by which we expect the final report from the consultants? Um, I will, we're expecting that by the end of July it would definitely be done. Jack? Um, so you have this consultant report, and how do how does the public, the local, you know, Amherst residents weigh in? And for non-Amherst residents, uh, how how is all this kind of weighted in terms of a proposal that is uh, presented to the town? Is that well? It's not just one proposal. It will be a whole list of recommendations and different things everything from managing the parking system to signage, um, the actual um, spaces, size of spaces, everything. So it, we expect a laundry list of things that can be done to improve parking, not just a couple things. Um, if you look at their scope of work, there's a lot um, of things they're going to cover. So uh, part of public feedback is like I said, this process has been going on for many years. So back in oh, 2014, 20, 2015, through now, there's been many public forums. What we had last week was the public feedback forum. But that doesn't mean the public doesn't have a chance to weigh in. The draft report will come out, and then um, they'll also have a chance to make comments at that point. Yeah, I'd just be interested, just in general, does the town feel like we have a parking problem or not? I mean, it, and and how urgent it is because it just. I think the consultant report came out and what 2016 and said we were we were good. Generally, I mean. Now we're getting into the deep end. <laughs> so um, it, it it says good except we have peak points. Lunch is the highest peak, and then dinner time, especially on. Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays are our peaks. And peak means you want lots to be 80 percent. That's okay, or even up to 90, because that means you have people downtown and they're using it and there's still spots for people to fill. Where it gets to be a problem is when it's 100 percent, right, because then there's no spots. But we've never had where everywhere is 100 percent. What happens is certain lots, like the one in front of like town hall here, that will hit 100% on a 7 p.m. on a Friday night. But the lot behind, the town owned lot behind CVS might only be 50% or 60 or 70%. So you want to move people to that. But part of the problem is we have, you know, we're lacking in signage and wayfaring, and, you know, so that people know that there's other spots there. And people, they do get a little bit into a routine where they always go to the same place, but if they knew that there were other places they could go and park, then that help, you want to move the system around. So we do have two peaks, and there are times where some lots and street parking is full. So what we're hoping for is recommendations for strategies to help improve people to find the parking spots that are available. Chris? There were a couple of other things that came up that I found really enlightening, and one of them was that people don't understand the permit parking system, and that many people think that the permit parking system precludes you from parking along these streets at any time, and what it actually says is 
until I think it's five o'clock in the evening. You can't park there unless you have a permit. But after five o'clock, you could park there. So there's actually a lot more parking available on the street than people recognize. The other thing that they brought up, which I thought was interesting, was that we've been thinking all along that the town should make an effort to um, be in touch with private landowners and try to arrange with private landowners to have the town manage their parking so that it could be used by others. And what Nelson Nygaard seemed to be saying was that it's not the town's job to do that, that we should leave it up to private property owners and developers to make these arrangements. So if somebody wants to build a new building downtown, maybe we say to them, you really need to find some parking or come up with a parking plan. And maybe your parking plan involves making a deal with some landowner whose property is only used during the day. So these are all things that I think are interesting to explore and could significantly expand the amount of parking that we that is perceived that we have downtown. So I agree with you. I just want to add that um, where some of the confusion was on the first point is there are some resident parking areas. So you have to read the signs and if it's a resident area then there's more limitations than the permit which is five o'clock and also to stress that the permit is not in effect on Saturday and Sunday. So people can, it, you just have to walk a little bit more, which some people don't like. Um, Jack? Oh, I had a question uh, for, for Chris, but uh, for the development that we've seen recently and the, within the downtown parking zone, is that what it's called? Municipal parking district. Municipal parking zone. So. We can't really ask them to provide parking, can we? We could change the bylaw to require them to come up with a plan to provide parking, or we could make recommendations during their public hearing that we really think you should try to find parking for your people and come back and tell us about it. So there are numerous ways you can do it. You can either require it or you can make strong suggestions and encourage things to happen. I think it's gonna be a, an evolving process and Nelson Nygaard will probably have suggestions about how we can manage this based on experiences they've had in other towns. So I'm really looking forward to hearing what they're saying. Christine? So just one more part about the shared parking lot or agreements with the town. I, I think what they were also saying is, um, particularly for the smaller lots, it's just too much work legally and to get small lots that have five or six spots for the town to manage that, which they did in the past, like uh, behind the Unitarian Church before they added on, that was um, a few spots that the town actually put meters in. But for larger lots, that could still happen because um, the town could take the initiative to work with land uh, property owners if they, if they could put meters or whatever. So. All right, thanks for those updates. Uh, report of the chair, no report. Report of staff. I have two things to mention. One is that um, I don't think I mentioned this at our last meeting, but we had a wonderful day in March where uh, four of us, um, Pam and I, and mm -hmm. David Levenstein and Maria Chow went into Worcester and we went to the um, Citizen Planning Training Collaborative program on a Saturday in March and we really learned a lot. All of us went to different programs and um, learned about all kinds of topics related to planning and it was really a worthwhile experience and it was fun to ride in the car with um, the other people and get to know them a little better. So yeah, but you awesome. only told us tonight that you have nearly bald tires. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I mean, have that I, it's not that I'm worried about bald or anything, but the tires. I'm, I'm having that looked at. <laughs> yes. And one more thing I wanted to remind you or tell you about the um, upcoming public meeting that's going to occur here in Town Hall on Thursday, April 25th at 7 o'clock. And it's going to be Mass DOT, Department of Transportation Highway Division, coming to tell us about their proposal to make significant improvements in the Route 9 corridor between University Drive and South Pleasant Street. Um, they have presented plans in the past to the public and also to the Transportation Advisory Committee 
um, they've taken our recommendations and comments, and now they're coming back with um, revised plans. And I encourage anybody who's interested in that corridor to come to this meeting because um, this may be our, our last chance to really have much influence on what they're doing going forward. But I think, if I, if I understand what they're proposing to do, I think they're coming up with a pretty good plan. Thank you. All right, everyone. We're adjourned. Thanks so much. Thank you.